Fortunately, power plants burning fossil fuels do produce a number of pollutants, which can be harmful to the environment. Pollutants from the boiler discharge to the environment in three different forms. Emissions contained in the flue gas discharging from the chimney to atmosphere. Liquid effluents such as wastewater from air heater washing. Solid waste material such as ash. During the plant design and construction stage, the engineers need to calculate the probable total quantity of pollutant discharge and identify the source of each individual contaminant. The plant design will then incorporate particular features to eliminate or at least mitigate the effect of these pollutants on the environment. Strict limits are placed upon the allowable concentration of pollutants which may be discharged from the plant. These limits are set by environmental authorities and enforced by government legislation. Compliance with the environmental regulation is essential in order for the plant to retain its operating license. The operating procedures, equipment design, and maintenance are all developed with these regulations in mind. Monitoring of critical discharges from the plant is performed on a continuous basis through the Continuous Emission Monitoring System known as CEMS. Regular reports must be submitted to the environmental authorities and spot checks and audits are often carried out without prior notice. But what are these pollutants and where do they come from? Well, the source of most pollutants is in the fuel itself, as we'll see in a moment. The troublesome emissions contained in the flue gas include particulate matter, toxic air pollutants, sulfur oxides, that is SOx, nitrogen oxides, that is NOx, carbon dioxide, or CO2, carbon monoxide, or CO, hydrocarbons, vapor emissions. Let's take a closer look at the effect of each of these pollutants. First, particulate matter. Particulate matter consists mainly of fly ash and possibly particles of carbon. The pollutant is actually solid material, but it is usually considered as an air contaminant because it is part of the flue gas stream and it affects the immediate surrounding atmosphere. The result is irritation to the eyes, reduction of visibility, perhaps an impediment to breathing for certain individuals, and the soiling of clothes, cars, and nearby residences. The particulate matter may include certain toxic compounds which are formed from small quantities of metals contained in the fuel ash, such as lead, chromium, nickel, and others. This problem may be more severe if the boilers are burning municipal refuse and industrial waste. Let's now look at the gaseous components of the flue gas. Sulfur oxides, SO2 and SO3, will be present in the flue gas if the fuel being burned contains sulfur. The SOx is produced by the combustion of oxygen contained in the combustion air and the sulfur. When the SOx discharges from the chimney to atmosphere, it mixes with moisture, and as this cools, it may form sulfuric acid and contribute to acid rain. Acid rain may cause damage to plant life, rivers and lakes, and the aquatic life therein. It may also be corrosive to metallic structures and in certain concentrations may even affect human beings. SOx is indeed one of the most harmful pollutants to be discharged from the power plant and steps must be taken to eliminate or reduce these emissions. We'll be looking at mitigation of pollutants later in this module. NOx includes various nitrogen oxides which are formed during the combustion process by high temperature reaction between nitrogen and free oxygen. Both of these elements are present in the combustion air and small quantities may also be contained in the fuel. When discharged to atmosphere, NOx, NOx, causes irritation to the eyes and throat and may even cause respiratory problems in certain individuals. It is also thought that NOx affects the ozone layer and also contributes to the formation of smog. Another constituent of the flue gas discharging to atmosphere is CO2, carbon dioxide. 
Actually, CO2 is inert and is not harmful in the atmosphere, but it is thought that the presence of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere may contribute to the global warming trend, the so-called greenhouse effect. At present, there are no emission limits placed on CO2, but conceivably, this may come at some future date. The flu gas may also contain carbon monoxide, CO, if combustion has not been completed in the boiler. Carbon monoxide is extremely poisonous and in high concentrations can quickly cause death in human beings. In practice, the quantity of CO discharged from power plant boilers is very small and becomes completely diluted by the other gases discharged and the atmosphere. The main purpose for monitoring CO in power plant flue gas is more a matter of efficiency than pollution control. The term hydrocarbon refers to unburned components of fuel, particularly oil or gas, such as one may possibly experience from a petroleum refinery or automobile. From the power plant, hydrocarbons are likely to include certain particulate matter, such as unburned carbon or fuel oil smuts. In some power plants, a large quantity of water vapor may be formed in the flue gas scrubbing process and is subsequently discharged from the chimney. This is often regarded as a sign of serious pollution by uninitiated observers. In fact, the vapor is quite harmless and it can be reduced by heating the flue gas to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit as it enters the chimney. From what we've just seen, we can say that the most troublesome contaminants in flue gas, those demanding attention, are SOx, NOx, and particulate matter. We'll look at the means for controlling these emissions later in this module. Let's continue our study of power plant pollutants now by looking at effluent discharges from the plant. The sources of effluent contaminants are boiler blowdown, air heater washing and chemical cleaning, cooling water systems, water treatment plant discharge, FGD slurry, that is waste effluent from a flue gas desulfurization installation, stormwater runoff from coal piles, ash ponds, oil tanks, and other possibly contaminated areas. So what are the effluent contaminants that cause environmental problems? One obvious item is the value of pH. This should normally be within the range of 6 to 9. However, more important is the need to maintain a steady pH value in the river or lake. Even small changes may have a profound impact on the ecology, that is, the plant and fish life. The presence of oil, grease, and any other floating material may also damage aquatic life as well as being undesirable from the point of view of appearance. Suspended solids contained in the effluent make the receiving body of water dirty and may also affect the color. Solids may also form sludge and settle in water channels. Traces of heavy metals such as lead, copper, zinc, mercury, and others may be contained in industrial effluents. In the case of a power plant, this may occur with stormwater overflow from the ash pond. Many of these heavy metals are classified as hazardous as they are poisonous to fish and also to human beings. Rapid changes in temperature are also hazardous for marine life. Therefore, the temperature of effluent discharging from the power plant must be maintained within established limits. Now, at this point, having looked at the nature of power plant pollutants, we'll take a break and then come back and see what can be done about this problem. For now, please switch off the tape and review this material in your workbook.